welcome to the special edition of Rajya Sabha Television Question Hour, where we get you all important unstart questions asked by the members of the Rajya Sabha and answered by the government. And joining me is my colleague Vishal Dhaya. Well, thank you, Kriti. Uh, let's uh, begin and let's uh, tell our viewers what are the important questions this time around. Well, Vishal, uh, today was an important day because a lot of important answers were given by the government pertaining to the Ministry of Defence. So, Kumari Shelda, the member of the Congress, has asked. The measures taken by the government to enhance the security of defence stations, army camps, civilians and also retaliatory action against terrorists and other persons involved in such attacks, including Pakistan. What's the answer, Vishal? Well, uh, the answer is uh, pretty much elaborate and in fact, uh, you know, this has been an issue which has been there in the public domain for quite some time. Uh, in the answer, uh, the minister Subhash Bhamre says that the government had issued broad guidelines for security of defence installations and in compliance with the said guidelines, the defence forces have now taken a number of actions including risk categorization of military bases, appraisal and upgradation of intelligence gathering capabilities, strengthening and streaming of response mechanism, use of unmanned aerial vehicles, periodic security audit of all military installations, etc. The Army has also carried out in-depth analysis of the terrorist incidents and security breaches that are identified with various incidents. Perimeter security projects of all three armed forces have been sanctioned by the government. And in addition to that, the next one, Akriti, is about Senic schools. Here, one of the members, Ripun Bora, has asked the government whether Senic school established as preparatory schools for entry into National Defence Academy and Indian Naval Academy. In a welcome break from being guarded as a male bastion, has now opened its door to girl students from the ongoing academic session 2018-19. So have the girl students been allowed to enter the Senic schools? Well, Vishal, the answer has been given by MOS Defence Subhash Bhamre and the answer is an affirmative. So girl students have been admitted in Senic school, Ching Chip, Mizoram, for the academic session 2018-19 on pilot project basis. Regarding the admission of girl students in respect of the Senic schools across the country will be decided after reviewing the outcome of the pilot project. Now staying on with Ministry of Defence, Narayan Rani has asked about welfare and rehabilitation schemes formulated for ex-servicemen by government through various agencies and the financial assistance provided in this regard. Well, the government has clearly uh, stated, Kriti, that uh, you know there has been a specific amount which has been disbursed over the years, and the MOS Defence, uh, in his answer, says that 202.07 crore rupees have been dispersed to 1,13,262 beneficiaries during the last three years. Now, the minister goes on to say that Kendriya Senic Board is the apex body of Government of India responsible for laying down policies, guidelines for the welfare, rehabilitation and resettlement of ex-servicemen and dependents in the country. These policies, programs are implemented for the benefit of ex-servicemen and their families. There is a specific cell in Department of Ex-Servicemen Welfare, that is DESW, for handling grievances related to pension. Then grievances related to pension fixation, disbursal, rehabilitation, re-employment, financial assistance, grant of benefits to ESM, families by the state governments such as land, houses, flats, compensation, etc. The grievances are forwarded by the pension grievance cell and other sections in the DESW to the respective government agencies in the armed forces, controller general of defense accounts for necessary action and approval. Apart from that, uh, one very important question, uh, staying with the Defence Ministry, uh, yeah. Kriti, is uh, by an MP, Saroj Pandey, uh, who goes on to ask the number of new enterprises that have been established for manufacturing of the defence requirements in the country itself and whether any contract has been signed with any private players for the same. Well, Vishal, there's a booster shot for indigenous manufacturing industries, particularly in the defence sector. And Subhash Bhamre has said that after the opening up of the defence industry sector in May 2001 for manufacturing by Indian private sector, subject to licensing, 379 licences have been issued to 230 Indian companies for manufacturing of various defence items. Till 2014, 42 licensed companies reported commencement of production to this ministry. Since then... 28 more companies have reported commencement of production. So make an India there, Vishal. Now moving on from Ministry of Defence to Ministry of Drinking Water and Sanitation. So D. Raja, the CPI MP, has asked whether it is a fact that a study conducted by the Niti Aayog has found that India is facing its worst water crisis in history 
and that the demand for potable water will outstrip supply by 2030 if steps are not taken. Rather a serious question, Vishal. It is indeed, and uh, given the fact that we have seen uh, so much public debate, so many reports out there as well, which are saying that uh, we need to go ahead and conserve water. We have had examples uh, in other global cities as well. Meanwhile, right. to this particular question, uh, the minister goes on to say that as per the latest report by Niti Aayog on composite water management index, 60 crore population in India face high to extreme water stress. By 2030, the country's water demand is projected to be twice the available supply. As far as the ministry is concerned, through centrally sponsored scheme, National Rural Drinking Water Program, that is NRDWP, technical and financial assistances are provided to states for providing safe drinking water in rural areas. The minister has also said that his ministry recently restructured the NRDWP to make it more competitive, result-oriented and outcome-based to reduce the slippages and inefficiencies in the rural drinking water supply. So clearly, there are some steps which are being taken by the government here, but the picture is not at all rosy when it comes to That's availability true. of water. That's true. That's true, Shah. Next, uh, if we move on uh, from uh, drinking water to another very important uh, aspect, and this time around, a question which has been asked by Sukram Singh Yadav and Visambar Prasad Nishad, they goes on to say that uh, whether it is a fact that climate of metro cities of the country, particularly Delhi, that's the national capital, often becomes like a gas chamber. Also, they have asked the government to state the steps that are being taken to make the climate of Delhi suitable as per the standards and the extent of their impact in making the air clean. So clearly, from drinking water to the air now, pollution. Yes, Vishal. So all of us need to combat rising levels of pollution. So MOC Environment, Mahesh Sharma goes on to answer this and says that among the four prominent metro cities, episodic rise in pollution levels has not been witnessed in metro cities other than Delhi. All extreme weather events are not necessarily a result of climate change, though they can be indicative. So government has taken several steps to address air pollution, including notification for national ambient air quality standards, setting up of monitoring network for assessment of ambient air quality, introduction of cleaner alternate fuels like CNG, LPG, ethanol blending, launching of national air quality index, banning of burning of biomass, promotion of public transport network, and streamlining the issuance of pollution under control certificate. So from environment to road and transport now, Vishal. Yeah. And N. Gokul Krishnan asks whether it is a fact that government is working to reduce road accidents in the country because remember, Vishal, in 2016, India witnessed 17 deaths and 55 accidents every hour. Oh, so well. certainly a very, very crucial issue. It is indeed. Uh, and the figures which you are quoting are clearly... Uh, and uh, example uh, themselves uh, as to how serious the problem is. Uh, and to address the problem, uh, the minister in uh, the Ministry of uh, Road Transport, uh, the Minister of State, uh, Mansuklal Mandavia, in his answer says, the government has approved a national road safety policy. Now, the government has also constituted the National Road Safety Council as the apex body to take policy decisions in the matters of road safety. The ministry has constituted group of ministers of state transport ministers to examine the best practices of transport and suggest issues and ways to improve road safety. Moving ahead, the minister also says that based on the recommendations of these groups of ministers, the ministry introduced Motor Vehicle Amendment Bill 2017 covering entire gamut of road safety. The ministry has formulated a multi-pronged strategy to address the issue of road safety based on four E's. Now, those four E's are education, engineering of both roads and vehicles, enforcement and emergency care. Road safety has in fact been made an integral part of the road design at planning stage. Road safety audit of selected stretches of national highways has been taken up. So clearly a number of steps which are being taken by the government to ensure that uh, those uh, accidental figures which you were quoting in the uh, initial uh, uh, question are brought down significantly. Uh, moving ahead uh, from uh, road safety to higher speed limits on expressway. Again, something which is related to accidents. Uh, this time around, K.R. Arjunan is asking uh, the government uh, whether a committee had recommended higher speed limits on expressway and for buses on highways. So Vishal, MOS Transport, Mansuk Lal Mandavia says that keeping in view of the better engine technology and improved road infrastructure, a committee was constituted to review the speed limit of motor vehicles. As per the recommendations of the committee, the maximum speed of buses has been fixed at 100 km per hour on expressways and 90 km per hour on four lane. Earlier, 
Vishal, it was fixed at 80 kilometers per hour. The maximum speed of car has been fixed at 120 kilometers per hour on expressways. And, and given the fact that we have uh, a number of expressways nowadays right. uh, being built throughout the country, these speed limits would definitely be really, really uh, important and significant. Certainly, Vishal. And now moving on to Ministry of Rural Development, Sanjay Sin of the Congress has asked whether the government proposes to hike wages of labourers of Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee or Manrega as per the present Consumer Price Index. Well, uh, the MOS uh, Rural Development, Ram Kripal Yadav, uh, has an elaborate answer to this and uh, he goes on to say that a committee under the chairmanship of uh, former Additional Secretary, Ministry of Rural Development, was constituted to study, among other things, the appropriate index of revising Manrega wages. Uh, uh, remember, this issue has been uh, in debate for quite some time now, how the wages should be revised and whether or not they've been revised to a particular extent. Now, the minister goes on to say that the committee recommended using consumer price index rural for revising Manrega wages every year. The committee also recommended use of annual average instead of the existing practice of using December month index only. Presently, the recommendations of the committee are under examination in consultation with the Ministry of Finance. So from here, let's uh, move on to uh, some other transport projects. And uh, the member uh, of uh, the House, Rupa Ganguly, goes on to ask uh, the government uh, whether the ministry has started the construction of uh, Sagar Mala transport projects for ensuring better and faster connectivity with co coastal areas. And also whether it has started the construction of Sagar Mala transport projects uh, in these areas. Well, Vishal, remember the infrastructure sector has received unprecedented push in the recent years. So the answer says that there are about 200 projects costing around 2.5 lakh crore rupees that have been identified under the Sagar Mala program for enhancing connectivity to Indian ports. These include 112 road projects, 70 rail projects, 11 inland waterways projects, 3 pipeline projects and 15 multimodal logistics parks. These projects are being implemented by various agencies such as National Highways Authority of India, Indian Railways, Ministry of Road Transport and Highways, Inland Waterways Authority of India and major ports. So these were important questions and the answers that were given today, Vishal. Well, definitely. We've covered uh, some important ministries, uh, specifically, uh, you know, the defence, uh, the transport, uh, as well as uh, something which relates to water and uh, environment as well, the air pollution. Uh, we'll take a short break here. And on the other side of the break, our colleagues, Arvind Singh and Akhilesh Suman, will take you through some other important questions from the other ministries. Stay tuned.